Hi, my name is Pastor Conrad Vine. I serve as the President of Adventist Frontier Missions and welcome to another edition of Grace and Grit, our daily devotional for you, our wider AFM family, as we journey through this pandemic together. The passage of scripture I'd like to reflect on with you this morning is found in the Beatitudes, the teachings of Jesus. And this is what Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. As we look all around our world today, truly, there are hundreds of thousands of families who are grieving the loss of a loved one, a mother, a father, a son, a daughter, a husband, or a wife. This beatitude touches the reality of suffering and death in all of its various forms. As such, it touches the reality of the human experience common to everybody like no other. And so this beatitude represents the fulfillment of humanity's hopes that we will indeed receive comfort. So what does Jesus teach? What does he mean by this beatitude? Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Well, firstly, Hollywood is built on our fallen desires that seem to enjoy watching the suffering of others. Blockbusters are built on the assumption that we will pay money to see the gory deaths of other people. Nothing could be further from the mind of Jesus. This beatitude has nothing to do with the fallen attitudes of Hollywood. No, there is mourning today because there is suffering and we were never created for suffering. Yet through the divine passive, they shall be comforted, Jesus reveals that there is a God who actively comforts us in the midst of our despair. Another lesson we learn from this beatitude is that suffering is an extraordinary teacher. Suffering can open the door to profound insights. We know little about the depths of the human spirit or the capabilities to soar within the human spirit unless we have gone through the most profound of suffering. Pain rearranges our priorities. To be a refugee is a terrible experience, yet refugees learn very quickly that the most important thing in life is life itself and earthly possessions are meaningless if one does not have the gift of life. When great natural disasters strike around the world, uh, you tend to notice there are two common reactions. Those who arrive at the scene of a disaster are overwhelmed with horror when they see the scenes of destruction and devastation. Whereas those who were there during the disaster and lived through it, they, they generally express a sense of deep gratitude that they made it out alive. There's a very different attitude on the part of those who survived the suffering from on the, that compared with those who merely observed the results of the suffering. We also see in the Gospels, particularly in the Gospel of Matthew, that Jesus came to heal all forms of human brokenness, alienation, and sinfulness. In the time of Jesus, people popularly believed that sin was the cause of suffering, and Jesus' authority over sin was manifest in his ability to heal all forms of suffering. We see in the Gospel of Matthew in particular that, that sin and, and suffering and, and illness was manifest in three levels. Firstly, there was what the Greek calls nosos, which is regular illness, such as Mark 4, 23 through 24. This is a problem of the body. You touch the hand, ouch, where does it hurt? The second level is found in the Gospel of Matthew. The Greek word is kakos. Uh, Matthew 21, verse 41 is a good example. And this is a problem of communal relationships, like who is to blame for the breakdown in society. But the deepest level of alienation and suffering that we find in the Gospel of Matthew is found uh, in the Greek word uh, malachia. And Jesus, he, uh, the, the Greek word is therapeuen. Uh, we get the word therapy from it. Jesus brings a form of cleansing to this form of illness, for instance, in the case of lepers. The point about the Gospel of Matthew is that Jesus is able to heal all forms of human alienation and all forms of human brokenness with all the pain that they entail. So what do we learn from this beatitude today as we look at the, at the pandemic around? Well, many people are stuck at home binge watching movies and Netflix and Hulu and on their Roku TVs. And the reality is, is that excessive entertainment only leads to boredom and ultimately to a sense of meaninglessness. Whereas suffering and experiencing suffering and ministering to those who suffer allows us to experience a depth of meaning that we may never otherwise achieve. If in our entertainment choices, as we go through this pandemic and we're watching TVs day by day, and many people spend 12, 14, 16 hours a day binge watching series on Netflix, if that is what we're choosing to do, and we are reveling in the sufferings of others, we will find boredom, 
a sense of meaninglessness, and most importantly, we are separating ourselves from Jesus, who never looked on a crowd with anything other than compassion. This hard-heartedness to the suffering of others closes us off to God's comfort in our own suffering as well. The righteous, they mourn over injustice and the suffering of others, and they do not succumb to compassion fatigue. They do not change the TV channels because the news looks distressing. They do not walk by on the other side of the road. They do not turn a blind eye. They do not avoid unpleasant topics. They do not pretend they do not know that their suffering, their neighbor is suffering. All of these micro decisions close us off for the moment to God's presence and God's comfort in our own suffering. The more I focus on my own need for comfort and ignore those who mourn around me, the more I close myself off to God. Paradoxically, in actively bringing comfort to those who are going through suffering, those who are grieving the loss of a COVID victim, we open ourselves to God's comfort and blessedness in our own lives. Secondly, the one who is lashed by the storm is often the one who is most grateful to God. Now, while we are not to seek suffering, that would not be a good thing, we do recognize that we grow the most spiritually during times that are difficult, during times that are painful. Suffering, therefore, becomes an opportunity not to curse God, but to thank God for his blessings in our life and to ask him how he wants us to grow during this time of this chapter of pain in our lives. And thirdly, the righteous mourn not only over physical suffering, but the righteous mourn over the problem of sin and our alienation from God. In embracing the world's brokenness and mourning, such as in Matthew 8, verse 17, Jesus is able to cure all who come under the authority of the alienation from sin. David talked about this in Psalm 51, a beautiful passage. Maybe for some of us, it's our favorite Psalm uh, in, in the Psalter. In Psalm 51, uh, we, David admits that our innermost sins do not refer to external actions, but those parts of our lives, include our hearts, that we have yet to give sovereignty over to God. When the kingdom of God is supreme in my life, then I learn to do God's will. But I find that when my heart, or the Greek word is cardia, when my cardia is alienated from God, when I'm alienated from God in my innermost being, it is very hard for me to experience the blessedness of God in times of pain and in times of grief. Thus, to mourn for our own alienation and at the suffering of others requires a new heart. Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Why not ask God today for the new heart experience of Psalm 51? Ask for that new heart that at your, our innermost being, we do indeed grieve over the reality of sin and the reality of the pain of the COVID pandemic around the world. And as we ask God for that new heart, he gives us that new heart whereby we can grieve with those who grieve, weep with those who um, weep, rejoice with those who rejoice. We can stand in solidarity with others as they go through the dark chapters of life. And in so doing, we open ourselves up to God's blessings ourselves. May God bless you and may God watch over us, each, one of, each and every one of us, as we minister to those going through the COVID pandemic. Blessed are those who mourn, said Jesus, for they will be comforted. Amen. Dear Father, I want to thank you for this beautiful teaching of Jesus. I want to thank you, Lord, that uh, he knows the depths of the human experience. That when he said, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted, that Jesus went through the greatest mourning any human could ever go through. Father, I want to thank you that in this teaching, we see the promise that oppression can be replaced by good news, that the brokenhearted will be healed by a binding up of your spirit that the captives will hear the, pro the proclamation of liberty, that the prisoners can experience release, that the faint of spirit will be replaced by a mantle of praise, that those who experience ashes today will be provided with a garland of praise, and that those who are experiencing mourning today and grieving profound personal loss, that you will replace this with the oil of gladness and comfort. Father, I want to thank you for the promise that those who mourn will be comforted. And as we look around at our world today, the grieving families who've lost their loved ones to this terrible pandemic, I ask, Father, that the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings within their families, that those who grieve will come to know Jesus as the resurrection and the life, and they will receive the promise by grace and by faith that one day they can see their loved ones again. Father, may we be ministers of hope, 
May we be truly ambassadors of Jesus Christ. May we live the promise that those who mourn will one day be comforted. And Father, for those of us who are grieving ourselves, I ask that with the passage of time, you will assuage our grief and replace it with a promise that one day all things will be made new again. With a beautiful promise that you will one day wipe every tear from our eyes, that we shall dwell with you and you shall dwell with us and we shall be your people forevermore, walking those streets of gold where sorrow and suffering and death and disease will be no more. So, Father, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. We claim that promise today for ourselves, for our loved ones, for our community, and for our nation. We ask this mercy not because we deserve it, but because you are a good Heavenly Father, and you delight to give good things to your children. Thank you for hearing this prayer. Amen. Somewhere on this earth, in the heart of a foreign land, a family with a passion is living their mission plan, bringing God's truth to a hungry, thirsty tribe, knowing where well their lives are always on the line. Missionaries need missionaries too. They need the prayers of loved ones. They need love from me and you. And when they just, like Christ, make the ultimate sacrifice, someday in heaven they'll thank you. Because you're a missionary. heaven they'll thank you for the things your prayers have brought them through and your mission is accomplished oh thank you you're a missionary too you're a missionary too you're a mission.